Deutsche Bank, along with several of the world's biggest commercial banks, is embroiled in a global money laundering scandal that spans over two decades, as documents leaked to BuzzFeed show the movement of $2 trillion in illicit cash through the Western banking establishment. Is it a coincidence that Deutsche Bank has about one half of the suspicious activity? As the old saying goes, where there is smoke, there is Deutsche Bank. Deutsche shares should not be traded, they are worthless, it's a house of cards. The report led by BuzzFeed News and including other media outlets around the world, was on the basis of what are called suspicious activity reports filed by the banks to the U.S. Treasury that had been gathered for congressional investigators to look at President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. The banks, by law, aren't allowed to comment on the SARS they file. Five global banks, JP Morgan, HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Deutsche Bank, and Bank of New York Mellon processed trillions of dollars of transactions despite concerns over potential crimes, reports say. These banks processed trillions of dollars of transactions identified as suspicious, according to the International Consortium for Investigative Journalists Review. No wonder, most insiders know that HSBC is the king of money laundering. The disclosure raises questions about the effectiveness of government efforts to stamp out money laundering. Some of the world's biggest banks, including HSBC, JP Morgan and Standard Chartered moved trillions of dollars identified as being potentially tied to money laundering or other crimes despite raising concerns about those transactions in filings with U.S. regulators, according to media reports on Sunday. These bank stocks, including Deutsche Bank's shares, fell sharply on Monday, after the release by BuzzFeed and the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists of thousands of documents seemingly showing that some $2,000 billion worth of illicit funds were moved and laundered through the U.S. financial system over two decades. After money laundering allegations, HSBC closed at its lowest level since October 5, 1998. Look for another wrist slap for banks. At their magnitude, Fines are just part of the cost of doing business. Broke governments much prefer fines as opposed to jury trials where the banks can afford top-notch legal talent, and the defendants just walk away. Bankers are held above the law. Private central banks and their member bankers make the laws. HSBC, the largest bank in Europe, had agreed to a $1.9 billion settlement for years of money laundering offenses. Don't kid yourselves, these penalties are just disguised payoffs to their organized crime lords, aka US federal government. The banksters always win. They make tens of billions of dollars and pay a few billion in fines. Good business model. As long as HSBC can get away with a $1.9 billion slap on the wrist and without the guys from Deutsche Bank and JP Morgan Goldman being sent to jail for their crimes. This only gets more foul with each passing day, week, month, and year. Like any lawless mobsters, the regulators, they don't jail or even stop a legal reprehensible crime. They simply shake down for a piece of the cut in a future position. Corruption is the system. The Deutsche Bank is run by criminals, but they've learned from their weaknesses as their big lies fail to cover their criminality. It will never stop until all those involved are brought to trial and sentenced to long terms at Huskau and barred from ever engaging in any enterprise involving money. Banks are like kids. If they don't get punished, they never learn. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to click the like button. And as you know friends, I rely on your donations to keep this channel functional. As you know, it takes a crazy amount of research and time to bring you this content on a daily basis, so I hope you consider helping with whatever donation you can afford. Thank you. Not surprising. HSBC started life via China's opium trade. The International is a good film about this kind of bank corruption. And the UK Chancellor at that time, George Osborne, personally intervened on behalf of HSBC, writing to the SEC and begging them not to prosecute. Osborne has gone on to be handed millions in bankster and big corporate loot. This when he was born into great wealth, so he hardly needs more. Osborne now has a nice juicy backhander from BlackRock, as a non-active board member. All high-level politicians in the West are owned by banking and big corporation. Blair has been paid millions per year by JP Morgan since he left office. His official title is working as a JP Morgan ambassador. In reality, he is guarding that lump of usury manure from ever facing justice. 
It's hard being a bank these days. After all, the oligarchs, criminals, and terrorists have all the money. What are they to do? Lend money to the unwashed masses? And it's not just Deutsche Bank, it is all major banks, and this has been going on for decades. A large part of the entire banking system is dependent on illicit money to keep it going. The difference between illegal money and legal money has never really been accepted as real by the banks. I am sure that top government officials in major countries were fully aware of what was going on but did not want to stir the pot, since everyone got some benefits, including some government operations. This could not have been going on for so long without international government's protection. And it will keep going on, soon everyone will forget about this story. Deutsche Bank has been under investigation for a long time. HSBC previously paid 600 million fine for money laundering. Most of the US banks paid billions in fines for the corruption that led to the Great Recession. However, the CEOs avoided jail time because they said they didn't understand how credit default swaps worked. Yet here we are today, and they still issue credit default swaps. I hope a reporter asks a CEO how the credit default swaps work. As the well-oiled revolving door between international corporations, government oversight, regulatory entities, and lobbyists spins as a perpetual motion machine, big banking will continue their criminal activity, money laundering, with impunity. With interest rates at zero, how else can banks make money? But now it's not just blind eye oversight and impotent regulation. It's the President of the United States, nobody will lend him money except the Deutsche Bank wash rinse repeat machine, who is our vigilant fox guarding the henhouse. HSBC has already made money laundering legal in the US through their lobbying efforts, so they won't get in trouble in the US now. They should make it legal in Europe now too. That's the problem when you open the money spigots full blast as all central banks are doing. You create a lot of malinvestment and money searching for profits regardless of whether it is legal or not. In this type of economy, only one type of people flourish. The rich and the criminals. The rest of us bear the brunt of this foolish monetary policy. Savers are punished, and debtors are rewarded. More of this goes on because more of it is allowed to continue. You would think that these crooks would be happy with their billions, but it seems enough is never enough. The worst sort of human filth is rising to the top because too many good people are allowing it to happen. Maybe it is inevitable? I don't know, but if we don't do something soon, this will reach a point where no law is the law. Say it after me. It is not okay to engage in criminal activity. Money laundering through banks has been an open secret for years. If you bother to look, essentially, all major banks have branches in the Cayman Islands, Antigua, Bahamas, Jersey, and most other tax heavens, where any other businesses are essentially non-existent. What are the world's largest banks doing in these remote places, where there is nothing else other than beaches and luxury yachts? This recent outrage at money laundering is laughable. These banks had branches in all these tax havens for decades. And I have a feeling that these branches were not catering to the relatively poor citizens of these countries. I am pretty sure that the US government, the Chinese government, and all other major governments were fully aware of what has been going on, but these banks also catered to these governments more or less hidden operations, which is why everybody closed their eyes. After this journalistic expose, probably many governments will feel that they have to take some action to appease the public, but these actions will be some largely symbolic fines, after which business will go on as usual. Money laundering occurs 24-7 every year. The two favorites places for criminals to launder money are real estate and casinos. What do you think places like the Cayman Islands are doing, now that tourism is down to zero? You can buy a condo in Grand Cayman paying cash, and nobody will ask you where the money is coming from. Then sell the condo two months later, open a legitimate bank account in Grand Cayman, and tell the bank that the money comes from the sale of the condo. And every condo can be 10 or 20 million. Laundered money is also a cornerstone of overpriced stocks. The only reason the many illegal activities, human trafficking, drug trade, white-collar corruption, etc. can continue on a massive scale is because high-level government and intelligence officials are getting a cut of the profits. Much of this corruption is done in public, but no serious investigation by the FBI or DOJ, whose actual duty is to protect those in control. Obviously, the money changes are in on it and are making billions. 
Does anyone think that the clever activities of criminals organizations created by the likes of Meyer Lansky have stopped after his death? They are now run by parasites with Harvard MBAs and law degrees. The reason the drug trade is thriving in the US is because the financial parasites are actively laundering the money, and politicians and intelligence agencies are taking a cut. Most Americans see it around the world but believe our leaders are outside the corruption. It couldn't continue without their support. Funny thing the 2008 financial crisis happened right after Wells Fargo had to shut down their aviation-powered money laundering service to the cartels, so said cartels pulled billions out. Pretty sad when the world economy is so fragile that regulators let's euphemistically call them law enforcement cannot risk taking formidable action against the banks and its executives, for fear the banking system will collapse. If, in fact, this system is as delicate as an eggshell, these actions are only kicking the can down the road while the obligations of the banks grow larger. If the system is rotten and full of deadwood, a paint job will not repair it. Only a disassembly and reassembly of banking will fix this mess, coupled with very strong oversight. Allowing corruption to go unpunished is exactly the same as approving it. And it will continue, as there is no disincentive to stop. It sure would be exceptional if we could conduct ourselves in an honorable and civil way, and realize that maximizing profits is just another way to say that values are less important than money. Sad, really. As usual, the laws of the land don't apply to banks. But Lord forbid a normal guy does a bit under reported taxes for a few bucks. They would go to prison as if they committed all sorts of nasty crimes. But if a bankster lied, cheated, and stole billions of dollars, no time. Bankers commit crimes and fraud in the billions. Nothing happens. Some guy tries to pass a counterfeit $20 bill and gets killed by the police. The world is sick with corruption. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.